Now we are going to talk about Intel DPC++ compatibility tool. We will talk on what is Intel DPC++ compatibility tool, learn a migration flow for a simple single file and more complex project migration, also take a look on some advanced tool options you may use. Intel DPC++ compatibility tool Thorough we will use compatibility tool or DPCT as a name is a part of Intel One API based toolkit, a core set of tools and libraries for building and deploying high performance data centric applications across diverse architectures. The tool assists in the migration of a developer's program that is written in CUDA to a program written in data parallel C or DPC which is based on modern C++ and incorporates portable industry standards such as SQL. Note that the beta release of compatibility tool is available at this moment. I want to highlight that the idea of migration process is that you need to do it once and then maintain a migrated DPC++ code, so there is no need in iterative process. Another important note is that we expect the tool to migrate approximately 80 to 90 percent of the code. Of course, it depends on the code and will be different depending on workload, but average ratio is expected to be around 80 to 90 percent. This means that the compatibility tool may significantly minimize the code migration time. It is available on both Windows and Linux and also supports an integration to well-known IDEs such as Visual Studio and Eclipse. DPC++ compatibility tool is not available as a standalone downloadable installation package and is not open source, so you need to install a One API based toolkit to get it. Set the environment for the tool using following commands after the installation of the tool. You can set the environment for all tools from base toolkit using a set var script. The general invocation syntax from the operating system shell is a common DPCT with optional arguments and source files. You can get the list of the Intel DPC++ compatibility tool specific options by passing the option minus minus help. We will talk about some interesting options later. To see the list of the language parser options, pass minus help option using the following syntax. Note that in some cases you will need to change parser options, for example, to change the default C standard version. This is a usual DPCT usage workflow. As an input to the tool, you need to pass the sources of CUDA application. Options, macro definitions, etc., that can be gathered via a special tool called intercept build. In a simple case, we don't need to collect settings from makefile and may skip it. You also need to provide relevant CUDA header files, which can be done via an additional tool option. The compatibility tool will attempt to migrate the sources. It is important to pass all required build options, headers and macroses to the tool so that it could parse the source code correctly. In cases when the tool doesn't support migration of some features, it inserts comments with additional insights into the generated source files and also generates warning in the tool command line output, so server code migration should be done by the developer. Note that the migrated code is a DPC++ code, but it also has helper functions, which are coming from the compatibility tool. You should add the include path to DPCT header files for a compilation of a migrated code. When additional efforts are required to complete the migration, the tool produces a corresponding warning and also adds comments into the code. Use grep in the generated source files for DPCT10 to find comments inserted by the tool. Warnings may look like these. Then you may find a clear description of a detected issue in the documentation and get an actionable suggestion. At this moment, there are 
35 different warnings generated by the tool. Now, let's take a look on how a basic invocation of a tool usually looks like. By basic, we mean a simple one-file migration where we don't need to care about additional options like make files and compilation databases. We will cover this later. To migrate applications, the tool requires certain CUDA header files which are not provided with the tool. You can make them available by pointing to them with a CUDA include path option in the command line. If this option is not specified, then the compatibility tool looks for the CUDA header files in some default paths. Currently, the tool supports the migration of programs implemented with CUDA versions listed on the slide. The list of supported languages and versions may be extended in the future. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes you need to change parser options, for example, to set a default C++ standard. You can do it via extra arc option. For instance, invoke the following command to migrate single source file with C++ 11 features. This is an example of a simple vector addition code migration to DPC++ by using a compatibility tool version beta 05 shipped with one API-based toolkit. Note that SQL and DPCT header files are included in the migrated code. Vector add kernel is migrated to a corresponding DPC++ kernel where SQL ND item class is used to identify work items local IDs. For memory allocation and deallocation, the unified shared memory APIs are used. For instance, malloc device and free functions are used in this sample. The kernel call migrated via helper function get default QA call from DPCT namespace. It is a static function to get the default queue and wait till all the tasks in the queue are done. Then we are submitting a common group and invoke a parallel for to enqueue a kernel as a parallel execution over the ND range. Since a get default queue wait function explicitly calls wait to complete all tasks in the queue, the call to mem copy is generated after the submissions of the common group, so we are sure that the data is updated and we may copy it to a host. We may finally deallocate the memory via three functions. If your project uses make or CMake tools, you can utilize compilation database support to provide compilation options, settings, macro definitions and include paths to the DPC++ compatibility tool. A compilations database is a JSON file containing the commands required to build a particular project. A compilations database can be generated by running the intercept build script, which is provided as part of a compatibility tool. The tool parses the compilation database and applies the necessary options when migrating the input sources. To create a compilation database, you need to configure your project and make sure it is clean. Then, invoke the build command, prepending it with intercept build. The intercept build script runs your project's build command without building the original program. It also records all the compiler invocations and stores the names of the input files and the compiler options in the compilation database file. By default, the Intel DPC++ compatibility tool looks for the compile command.json file in the current directory and uses the compiler options from it for each input file. The location of compilation database file can be changed using the "-p" option. 
The following steps are similar to what we already shown with a single file migration. Please take a look on the usage workflow overview. There is a nice real code example there, and you can try to pass all migration steps, including compilation database file creation. I also want to show some interesting compatibility tool options you may use in order to control the code migration process. Some DPC++ extensions are helping to simplify the code. By default, the compatibility tool generates the code with disabled class template argument deduction. In case it is enabled via specified option, the migrated code will use a C17 style with no template argument for some SQL types. Since the generated code is using C17 features, to compile such code you would need the compiler with C17 support enabled. One more extension helping with code simplifications is unnamed kernel lambda. SQL allows device kernels to be defined in a variety of ways one of which is as a lambda. SQL 1.2.1 requires that a kernel name be specified as a template parameter. DPC++ has an extension which makes naming of lambdas at invocation time optional. By default, the tool generates a code with unnamed kernel lambdas in the code. You may set the option SQL named lambda to generate the code with named lambdas, which is in accordance with the existing SQL standard. This is the last option I want to show in scope of this presentation, which is on in the compatibility tool by default. The namespace generated by the tool is SQL and not CL SQL. The option no CL namespace inline will force the tool to use a full namespace. Note that there are other interesting options available in the tool you may use in order to control the code migration. Thank you for your attention, and now we are open for Q&A session.